Hi guys, welcome to the Citizen Channel. I hope you're all staying safe and well. Please, if you are new to this channel, please push that subscribe button. We do everything city, past and present here on these little vlogs. So I do try and inform and entertain. And there's some links on screen as well for Facebook and Twitter where I do post loads of city stuff. So if you follow a friend me on there, I do check every few days and follow a friend everyone back. And if you do get a chance, please have a check out my uh, film and TV channel as well, uh, which I try and inform and entertain on there and all the latest films and TV drama here in the UK and from around the world. So if you can check that out, that will be fantastic. Anyway, hope you enjoy today's feature. Right, today we're going to continue our look at city history, of course, from 1880. And today we've got to the season 70, 71, 1970, 71. There you go. Uh, just quickly on a personal side, it's when I started going to high school here in the UK. I attended uh, Parswood High. I'd left Old Moat Junior School in Whittington. Uh, and actually, uh, we had choices in those days. You had, you had three choices, and me and my friends all put, I think we put Wilbram, as, as sorry, Parswood as first choice, I think Wilbram and then Burnage. You had three options, obviously, we all wanted. And it's only me who got Parswood. I was literally like two of us in the whole school got Parswood, and I was either lucky or unlucky, depending which way you look at it. But uh, all my mates got uh, sort of Wilbram. Or Burnage, so uh, ended up going to Parswood. We'll had to make a new few new friends there as well, which was uh, had a sort of uh, sort of uh, sort of change to my current friends as well. Obviously, in seventy seventy one, I was going with my my mates into the Platte Lane stand. That my dad had passed away, uh, so that was the first full season. Uh, where I was actually going to go with my friends in the Platte Lane. I used to sit in the Platte Lane with my dad, but I went with my, with my friends. And obviously those friends over the course of high school years, obviously I'd sort of made new friends at high school and we sort of drifted apart a little bit. And uh, obviously I started going with, with other guys from Parswood High School. But uh, yeah, so that was me. That was my very first years. Uh, obviously uh, I didn't get my head flushed down the toilet or anything like that. All these horror stories you hear when you leave junior school and go to high school, which uh, <laughs> I don't know. I still, certainly heard those when, when my kids were young as well. So, yeah, and I got none of that. And uh, as I say, I made a couple of early friends who, who then I went, I found a, uh, uh, one or two friends who sort of stayed with me then for certainly for my teenage years and into my 20s. But uh, obviously, that'll be touched upon as we look through other years in this uh, look at history. But hey, back to his back to city. This is what we're talking about, back to city, but just a little bit of shared of my little little uh, life as well for you there. Yeah, in, in, in we're going to look at this. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, 70-71 season in two parts. So this is uh, obviously part one. We're going to look at uh, early disappointments, uh, uh, certainly on the pitch and off the pitch. There was sort of problems brewing as well, which we'll uh, touch upon in part one here. But obviously we'll go into more detail in part two. Uh, we went into the 70-71 season. Of course, uh, quite a unique situation. No English team had ever done this before as, as the League Cup and European Cup winners cup holders. No no one had ever done that before. So that was that was quite a, a claim to fame for, uh, uh, but let's face it, at 70-71, City were uh, uh, not just a big club, but probably a massive club. All right, perhaps not as massive as another team down the road, but uh, they, we were up there, but we'll talk about that later on. Uh, so we held those two titles. Obviously, uh, it wasn't long ago. Was also we'd we'd held we'd held a league title, an FA Cup, uh, and of course then we did this league and cup winners cup double. So things were good, as I say. I went to high school. Plenty of city fans at Parswood as well. There was plenty of city fans at Old Moat Junior School. So yeah, I was in good company anyway. Obviously, there's always a sprinkling of United fans as as there was in those days. But uh, certainly that would that would increase over the years, wouldn't it? But say uh, that's we're not talking about that, are we? But uh, how how could City fail to build on this? All these cups we've been winning. How could we, how could we not add at least another trophy or two to the cabinet? Well, uh, <laughs> despite despite these glories, of course, there was a uh, one big blip. There's going to be more blips coming along the way, but uh, it was it was actually the partnership of Mercer and Allison. Uh, as we've talked about before, yeah, as far as Allison was concerned, uh, Joel Mercer was on sort of borrowed time as manager of Manchester City. He'd taken he'd taken this job as Joel's number two initially on the basis that uh, Joel Mercer wouldn't be there for that long and uh, he would actually step up uh, and take on the role. Uh, Joel Mercer would be moved upstairs. So don't forget, it was, uh, Joel Mercer had been a bit poorly before he took the role, so he wasn't expected to sort of have this sort of hands-on and manager thing for too long, even, even obviously himself, but obviously it was sort of hinted to Alison that he would be there to sort of obviously step into his shoes uh, 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 
certainly before this day, don't forget, Joe, I mean, obviously this has been his fifth season in charge now, Joe Merce. I'm sure Alison had never expected that length of time, although there was a, a, a an OK relationship. Obviously, this putting putting a little bit of pressure on it uh, behind the scenes. Uh, and despite this on-pitch glory, of course, uh, Alison remained a little bit frustrated, not just with Joe Mercer, but uh, everything about the board, etc. Obviously, the, the guys who, the money men, the guys who run City. Uh, he thought City did lack a little bit of ambition. Obviously, we'll t keep touching upon this as we go through this uh, look at 7071. Although we'd come a major force, of course, in uh, both English and European football, uh, which we had. Alison still believed the club was sort of being held back a little bit by uh, what he what he looked at as penny pinching uh, the penny pinching board members etc. And City in general uh, off the pitch were thinking a little bit too small. We could do a lot better. Although on the face of it, things appear to be being done uh, the correct way. City has started to redevelop the North Stand this season. And uh, obviously, that had been an open scoreboard end, as you know. And uh, I actually didn't get uh, to stand on that original open scoreboard end. I did get to, to sit in the new North Stand. I didn't get to stand on in the in the redone North Stand either, which was obviously, uh, I think it was standing for a season before they put seats in it. But... Uh, uh, so obviously the fans uh, for this season uh, would be a little bit frustrated because some games they might be struggling to get tickets because obviously with the reduced capacity it was going to affect uh, affect the crowds. But obviously the City were at least on that on that basis thinking long term, weren't they? We're talking about this uh, uh, a standing North Stand holding over twenty thousand people at, uh, at this stage. So obviously it would uh, add to the add to the capacity when it was when it was done. But obviously we did have the limitations in the meantime. And of course, it will be a structure. The new North Stand will be a structure. This cantilever stand was fairly new in those days. Uh, would be a structure that most clubs will be proud of in, in you know in the top in the top division in England. Never mind anywhere else, in, in, and even in Europe, it was uh, going to be something we could be proud of. Uh, despite this off-field tension, obviously with Mercer and Allison and the board, etc., we did start very, very well as you'd expect. We kept most of the same squad that we'd had uh, over the recent seasons, and uh, after eight games, City actually sat uh, second in the table, and a, a push for the title was clearly expected. As I say, with almost the same squad that had won those uh, cups over recent years. Uh, uh, why not? Why? Why? Why would we think that we weren't going to push for the title? We did have a new new face who was making quite an impression at, uh, at eighteen years old. We had a guy called Tony Towers. Yeah, obviously he's, he's one of these guys that sort of um, we'll touch upon in other vlogs, etc. But. Uh, he played at number seven and eleven, uh, getting rave reviews, and he was a pretty much a great utility player as well. He played in defence, etc. It even it even been compared. I don't know who did this. Whether they'd had it, been been on the beer the night before, I'm not too sure. But if he it even been compared to the legend uh, Bobby Moore, who we know about, obviously. Uh, although Tony Towers himself was quite a level headed guy, and he sort of didn't take anything too much to his head. Nothing, you know. He just just went and did his job, and uh, say uh, find out a little bit more on Tony Towers and obviously we'll talk about them in future episodes of this and other vlogs I do of course but uh, yeah yeah so they had a new Tony Towers who's sort of a bit of a utility player which was very useful in those days you know say we had didn't have massive squads but it was good to have a guy who could play in different positions a 4-1 win at home to Stoke on the 19th of September had been our eighth game and that was so oh, that had been our eighth game unbeaten in the league so as I said we were sat second a crowd of over 35,000 that day saw uh, Tony Buck, Neil Young and Francis Lee score and uh, yeah the fourth goal was an own goal by the keeper yeah the, a keeper called uh, Gordon Banks uh, who I think we all know very much about and certainly even you younger guys I'm sure know a little bit about the, the uh, soon to be legend Gordon Banks of course but he managed to score an own goal for us so well done Gordon in that game We'd actually suffered our very first defeat in the league uh, at White Hart Lane in um, obviously game week Division One, game week nine, if you like, or our ninth game of the of the season, and uh, it was a, a two 0 defeat. Uh, the following week after the after the Stoke game in the league, uh, but going away from the league for a minute, obviously as league cup holders. Uh, we had suffered an embarrassing defeat already. Uh, yeah, in round two away at Carlisle United. No uh, disrespect to Carlisle, but they were bouncing after that one. Uh, a Francis Lee goal wasn't enough uh, 
uh, and we were knocked out to one. I think it's Brun Brunton Park, is it? At, uh, I think it's still called that, isn't it? My my apologies. Do have a couple of guys I know who support Carlisle, but uh, yeah. So that was uh, a great day for for Carlisle, obviously to beat us, and that was our League Cup uh, uh, sort of uh, defence uh, up in flames, if you like. And before the Stoke League game that I just mentioned there, where we won 4 1, we'd also start the defence of the Cup Winners' Cup. So obviously, things were, there's a lot of games going on. You know, it's, uh, I say the pitch was getting a bit of stick early doors, and that was going to rebound on us later in the season, as it often did at Main Road. We played that many games sometimes. It just became a, a bit, not as bad as Derby County, but uh, at uh, baseball ground. But it certainly uh, struggled a lot of games, as you if you ever watch back old games from the late 60s and 70s, etc. But we had a, a seemingly, a seemingly easy tie a first first leg home tie against uh, Belfast's uh, Northern Ireland's Linfield of course uh, which again is, is another vlog I'm, I'm sort of in the process of doing at the moment uh, about that so, but obviously we had a seemingly an easy one but we, we just scraped it at Main Road I was there that night uh, uh, a Colin Bell goal saved our blushes basically but we sort of underestimated Linfield um, and they sort of battled and thoroughly deserved just to you know in, in fact may have even deserved a draw at least but uh, we managed to to beat them one nil and took a very narrow lead back into the second leg in in Belfast. Obviously, that's a story in itself, and talk about that. Uh, obviously, it was at the height of the troubles, etc. So, as I say, if you do get a check, uh, as it's not available yet, but I don't know when you're watching this, it may be available. Uh, just check out uh, my little thing on Linfield as well. That's a, quite an interesting blog. So after the defeat to Spurs, City City actually went two 0 down. We lost two 0 at Spurs. Went to Northern Ireland to play this second leg. We were determined. Uh, yeah, I mean all the all the sound bites were good we were determined not to underestimate this uh, small Belfast club again as we had or seemed to do at Main Road I'm sure we didn't it's just obviously a, perhaps a psychological thing I'm not too sure they perhaps relaxed a little bit more because of, of who they were playing but again there was a <laughs> there was a shock on the cards at uh, Little Linfield yeah as they humbled us absolutely humbled us they beat us unbelievable well it was unbelievable to us not unbelievable to them because why not they, they went for it uh, they humbled the English giants at the time with a with a shock two one win, thoroughly deserved win. Uh, shock uh, two one win. I'm not sure how many City fans were allowed or made the trip over there. I have no idea. Uh, a sort of bell goal though, obviously in the two one two one uh, loss saw us through. Of course on the. On the now defunct, as I'm recording this, away goal rule. So there you go. That was that was an interesting thing, which turned out to the only time in European football that the away goal rule favoured City. We've actually we'd lost one or two key games, as you you'll probably know. But uh, yeah, so this was. Uh, we got the benefit, of course. We were obviously a 1-0 win at home and a 2-1. We got the away goal. So on 2-2, we went through on the away goal rule. So, uh, of course, uh, we just about did it. We just about scraped through. So uh, that wasn't too bad, did this? But uh, well, there you go. So City had, like in the defence of, of the League Cup, almost embarrassingly suffered uh, a defeat in defence of the Cup Winners' Cup at the very first hurdle as well. But fortunately, we got, we got past that. And we'd also been playing, yeah, we'd also played in the Anglo-Italian Cup. Yeah, it was a busy team in September. A, a strong city team had travelled over to Bologna, Bologna, uh, Bologna uh, at the end of September. My apologies for the pronunciation. And we could, uh, when we came back to Main Road, again, I was there that night, it was a 2-2 a draw. And so we went out of that cup, the Anglo-Italian Cup, at the, at the first attempt. I'm not sure we actually entered it again, actually. I'd have to check up on that, but I don't think we played in it again. It was our first and only attempt at the Anglo-Italian Cup. Uh, so we got out got out of that in the first try. Obviously, we lost 3-2 on aggregate in that one. And uh, it obviously said it could have been our first and final effort at that competition, but uh, it was more or less a glorified European friendly tournament anyway, but obviously uh, featuring an English and Italian teams. So, I mean, the, the clues in the name, of course. Yeah, so in the next round of the Cup Winners' Cup, at least we could get back on track. Uh, we travelled to Homved in Budapest uh, in Hungary, uh, and this time we, we won a tough tie. We should have done better. We won 1-0, uh, although we should have really added more to the solitary Francis Lee goal. 
uh, and the replay at main row was played in awful weather I say the pitch was taking some stick by this stage the weather wasn't great I mean we're talking Manchester here aren't we I mean you know we've had this over the years uh, and the game at uh, back at main road uh, with we brought back a 1-0 advantage he was looking to be finished I mean he was almost uh, almost called off by the referee uh, on one or two occasions he's almost never started but uh, fortunately we uh, managed to complete the 90 minutes and two goals from Bell and Lee uh, may, it took us to a 3-0 win over aggregate over Hombard so as I say that set us up for a quarter final I say you win you win against two teams in those cup winners cup as in the European Cup at that time you were through to the quarter finals and you didn't play loads and loads of games obviously in those days so that set up a quarter final with Gornick yeah of course uh, the team we'd beaten the previous season in, in the cup winners cup bet final in in uh, in Austria in Vienna wasn't it uh, the previous season well, this was going to be played the following March, so a lot of a lot of water was going to land on that pitch, etc., etc., between between then and the following March for this quarter final. But there you go, that was on the pitch, as I say. And meanwhile, City's league form had uh, begun to stutter a little bit around all these cup competitions, etc. Uh, and even worse was some off the pitch frustrations had begun to further develop as trouble in the boardroom, not just not just Mercer and Allison, but trouble in the boardroom was bubbling beneath the surface. Uh, so we're going to have a look at that. Uh, join me in part two as we uh, say we celebrate getting through to the quarterfinals of the Cup Winners' Cup. But uh, yeah, things off the pitch are developing very fast, and there's going to be lots and lots of trouble for the uh, seventy for the rest of the seventy seventy one season. So please join me for part two. What we're going to do this today. Have a great one. Look after yourselves. Look after friends. Look after your families. More point, let's all look after each other. To join me here again on the Citizen Channel, or perhaps have a flit across. Have a look at my film and TV channel. I only ask one thing. If you don't, guys, please stay safe, Blues. Come on, City. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.